In this video, I'm going to be showing you the new open source models by Google. There are two models and they're built on the same research and technology that were used to create Gemini, which are their flagship models. In terms of the intention of these models, as you see here, the 2B model is really intended for mobile devices and laptops. And the 7B model is intended for desktop computers and small servers. So if we take a quick look at the benchmarks, MMLU score is the general breadth of knowledge of that language model. So for the Gemini Ultra model, when it came out, the MMLU score that it touted was better than GPT-4. Now that caught some flack. And similarly with this model, it is catching a little bit of criticism. So when Google puts out a model, one thing to note is that this is marketing material. So on their blog post here, the chart that they decided to put out was a chart where it looks like Gemma is outperforming all of the different metrics across the board. But there is a much better way to look at all this if you actually check out their technical report, which I'll link in the description of the video. They do pull up both Llama 2 and Mistral in the comparisons to the different models. And on all the different metrics, Gemma does perform very well across many metrics. If we look at the far right-hand column here, the Gemma 7B variant does look to be the most performant across most metrics here. Now, with that being said, there are a handful of metrics within this chart where Mistral and respectively Llama 2 do outperform. So Gemma might not be a drop-in replacement necessarily for Mistral or Llama, depending on the task. Now, with that being said, I definitely encourage you just to try out all of these different models. And if you have something running in one of your applications, say if you're using something locally like Mistral 7B, or if you're using that on an application that you might have, just testing it, maybe doing a bit of a canary test on seeing how well something like Gemma performs some of the same tasks. So maybe not just swap it out all at once, but just get a sense on how it performs. So one of the things I found interesting within the technical report is that the 7B model is actually closer to 8 billion parameters. So while the comparisons do show that it's 7B models, it is awfully close to 8 billion parameters. Just something to take with a grain of salt with all of this. Now, on this video, I wanted to show you also how to get started with it. There's a number of different ways on how you can get started with Gemma right now. Google referenced a few different examples. I'm going to be showing you how to get set up on your local machine as well as a couple other options that weren't mentioned. If you head over to either Kaggle, Vertex AI, or Hugging Face, you can get started as Kaggle. You can just sign up for an account, get started there. Similarly, on the Google Cloud platform, if you haven't signed up before, you'll be able to get, I believe it's $300 worth of free credits where you can go ahead, play around with the different models. Now, the thing with the Google Cloud platform, if you go within their model garden, you're not just going to be limited to using something like Gemma. You could use things like the Gemini Pro Vision model or the Gemini Pro model and interact with all sorts of different models, including other open source models as well. So that's a good option if you want to play around with a bunch of different models, as well as just in general, Google Cloud and their platform. There's a ton of different services within there. Now, the next platform you can check out is obviously because it's an open source model, it is on Hugging Face. So you can go ahead and check out the model card on Hugging Face. You can see all of the different details on how it works. And one thing to note that I don't think I mentioned is there's two model sizes available. One is pre-trained and then there's also one instruction variant. So it's really interesting to start to see other players enter the open source arena. Obviously we saw Meta come in with their Llama 2 models last year and that really garnered a lot of support from developers and the open source community and Meta really got a lot of uh, good attention from doing so. so. It looks like Google is taking a similar approach to what Meta had done last year. Now, another thing to note is if we just head back again to the technical report, the really interesting thing with all of this is Mistral. The company behind Mistral, from what I understand, it's only about 30 people. And when you compare that to something like Meta or Google, these are companies with tens of thousands of people working for them. So it just goes to show you how impressive the Mistral AI team and definitely is a team to keep an eye on with all of these different models coming out. So if you're interested in some of the technicals of the model, I'm going to link out to this paper here in the description of the video where you can take a look. It's not a super long read. It's 16 pages. It's very short. It's very concise. And you can get an overall look on how the model itself was built. So if you're interested in the model architecture, how it was trained and all of that, this is a good paper to check out from the Google DeepMind team here.
Hugging Face is an option where you can go ahead and check out a ton of different information about the model. There's also a community tab here. We can go ahead and discuss the model or if there's certain issues they might be having, you can go ahead and talk about them here. Another option you have is Hugging Chat. So you can head over to Hugging Chat and then you can select the model that you want to use here before you start the conversation. There's a number of different models that you can interact with. So if you choose the Gemma model here, like I will, and I just say, hello world, you'll see that it has like a chat GPT feel and GUI on how you can interact with it. You can say, write me a Node.js application and you can see it has that nice little markdown editor where you can copy the bits of code from it as well so it's a nice little interface where you can play around with the different models here so similar to this interface is perplexity labs and the nice thing i like about perplexity labs is the inference speed is really fast as well as some of their closed source models that allows you to interact with an llm that does have access to the internet so if i go ahead and say write me a short story you can see here from the response that it was very fast in how it responded to me. So it responded at over 200 tokens per second. Now, obviously this is a smaller model. Then if I try on the 7B model and I say, write me a story. So while it's not as fast, obviously, as the 2 billion parameter model, it's still clocking in at over 100 tokens per second. So a really great option to interact with this model if you'd like. So while the Perplexity has a really well-known application that you can use that works really well, they also have a really great API that they recently released in the fall. So while this model isn't quite yet in the documentation for the API, I would be surprised if you go ahead and try and query the model that it would work. And if it's not here at time of recording, I wouldn't be surprised if the model shows up here in short order. The last option I wanted to show you is Olama, which is a really easy way to get started with running these large language models on your computer. You can go ahead and download this. You can go over to the models. You can pick the different models that you want to interact with. So in this case, if we click Gemma, all that you need to do once you have Olama installed is you can go ahead within your terminal and run Olama run the 2B variant or Olama run Gemma the 7B variant. So you have the option to run either of those right from your computer. And the other thing that's nice with Olama is there's widespread integration for Olama across a ton of different platforms. So you can use this in things like Langchain, you can use it on Llama Index, and it's really easy to set up. So essentially what Olama does, it will set up a local inference server where you can go ahead and query different models. So if you have Llama 2 installed, or if you have Gemma installed, you can go ahead and with this simple SDK wrapper, you can begin to query it and integrate it into your applications. So say if you have an application, if you want to leverage all of the compute that you have just on your laptop or your home PC or whatever, you can do that all from here. Now, the one thing to note for the Gemma model itself, if you already have Olama installed and you try and pull down the Gemma model and it doesn't work, you'll have to get started with the 0.1.26 version. So if you head over to GitHub, I'll put all the links for this within the description of the video. You can just pull down the correct version for your operating system, install that, and then you'll be able to pull down the model and run it with the newest version here. Just to show you how Olama works. So once you have it installed, you can just go within your terminal. You can simply type Olama run Gemma, or you can specify the different model sizes you want explicitly. So if you just run Gemma, that's going to default to the 2B variant. And then once you're in there, you can say, tell me about our solar system. And then it's starting to go and tell us about the solar system. So a little bit about my machine. So I have a newer book, so I get pretty good local inference speed, but I also have older hardware as well. And it does perform pretty well across pretty much all the different hardware that I've thrown at it. So I haven't really been too disappointed with the model speed unless I'm running a bigger model, like a 34B model or attempting to run something like a 70B model. I haven't run into any issues when trying to run inference locally with these models that are smaller than 7B or even 13B on most of the machines that I have. Another thing I was playing around with earlier is asking it to return. So if I say always return responses in JSON with the key message, and then if I go from tell me about our solar system. So just to remind you, this is a really small model. This was something that for a really small model actually impressed me. So one of the things that I found 
is earlier last year when I was playing around with GPT 3.5 is trying to get responses like this consistently were often pretty difficult. And when I was playing around with this, I got a decent hit rate for getting consistent responses. Now, it didn't have a 100% hit rate. Sometimes it would return a string or it would say something like, I can't answer that message. But just to be able to play around with these models and being able to potentially leverage them for parsing queries and having them return JSON to you are going to be a really powerful use case for these smaller models if they can work consistently or consistently enough, I should say. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the new Gemma open source models. Let me know what you think of the Gemma models. I want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'd be curious to hear all your thoughts within the comments of this video. That's it for this one. If you found this video useful, like, comment, subscribe. Until the next one.